All right, welcome to lab two. Let's talk about it. Before we get into the write-up, I just want to teach you uh, one piece of C++ that you may not have seen before. It's called the pair type. Uh, it exists in the utility library, so I've got to include that if you want to use it. And here's like the, the docs page. It's just a type. It's a templated type that holds two things. A pair is just a type that holds two things, the first thing and the second thing. That's all. And if you want to make a pair, you say make pair, and let's talk about that. Okay, so pair T1, T2 is a type that holds two things. The first type could be anything, and the second type could be anything. Like I could make a pair of ints and bools, or bools and ints. It's uh, it's different because it's the first thing holds an int, and the second thing holds a bool in this case. Okay, so here's how I make a P uh, that is a pair of ints and bools. Uh, to make some pair, uh, you don't use the like the constructor. There's a special library make pair function, make underscore pair. And then you give the two things that you want to make the pair out of. So the x, the first thing that you give has got to be the int, and the second thing that you got that you give has got to be the bool. Okay, so that's my example of making a pair, and now it's packaged together. P holds those two values packaged together. That's all. It's just copying them. So and it's putting them both in one place. So now you have a pair of things, and you can extract the individual pieces with P dot first and P dot second. So that gets you the first thing, uh, the int in this case, and P dot second will give you the bool for this particular example. Okay, so that's how you make a pair of things. And now we're ready for the write-up. So this lab is about encryption, and I have not yet taught you the RSA algorithm, but don't worry, there's plenty of this uh, lab that you can get started on. We just need one more lecture, and then we'll get everything in. So you can complete this after next week's first lecture. Okay, so uh, let us begin RSA. Uh, the first thing that I want to say is starting this lab, you can work in pairs. So groups of two, no more though. Uh, you can find a partner to, to work on all your future labs with, okay? And you can assume that every lab from now on, unless I tell you otherwise, you can work in pairs, okay? To make it easier for me to grade you, I still want you both to submit to the autograder, submit separately to the autograder, once under each of your accounts, and uh, that'll just help me grade you. And then also, I want you to include a comment in your code, uh, maybe at like the top of the file, saying who you worked with because I don't want to think that you copied your code when I see that two of you have the same exact code. Uh, I don't want to think that somebody stole somebody else's, okay? So tell me that you worked with somebody, if you did. And uh, the question of how in the world am I going to share exactly my code that I'm currently working on with somebody else might come up. I would be willing to help you figure out the answer to that question. I have some ideas if you'd like to talk about them with me. I can help you get code uh, and transfer code between uh, each partner, okay? And then also feel free to just post on our Discord channel saying, hey, I would like to work with a partner. Is anybody interested in that? Okay, so spam the Discord if you like, and then we're ready. So get that starter code, and here are the files that you will receive. Let's start working. So. Essentially, all you're going to do is, I've made some comments, you're going to uh, look at rsa.h, and that's where all these functions that I'm asking you to write are defined. You'll implement them in rsa.cpp, okay? For the most part, the book is fine. The book is going to give you enough information to implement every single function except for the extended Euclidean algorithm, extended GCD. For that one, maybe it's best to check out the Wikipedia page. Did I just get rid of that? Of course I did. Uh, new tab, Wikipedia page. Uh, there's some pseudocode for the uh, extended GCD, okay? Extended Euclidean algorithm. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Let me look at the code with you first, though, okay? So that is the idea. So there is that. Let's go over the code. So vim rsa.h. So we have a lot of things that you can currently do. We have GCD, you can implement that right now. Uh, we have extended GCD, you can implement that right now. And if you'd like to read ahead, go for it. Uh, I'll explain the rest of these in the next lecture, though. Uh, N5, what does that mean? Pow mod you can actually do right now, too. You just calculate a number to the power of another number, modulus m, OK? So x to the power of y mod m, you can do that with a loop and some mod operations. So. You can start and implement all of those right now, and the rest I will make sense in the next lecture. Okay, so those are the functions you'll be implementing in rsa.cpp, and I've given you a bunch of stubs right now uh, for them. So here they all are working, and so just get them 
to return the right things, OK? And extended GCD is the one that needs to return a pair, right? Because it needs to return a pair AB such that uh, AX plus BY, those original Xs and Ys, equals their GCD, OK? Oh gosh, that should have been uh, XY. Sorry, now it's XY. All right, so yeah, implement this, and you're going to return a pair of those two numbers such that this equation holds on the input. OK, so that is extended GCD. And then the rest uh, should be self-explanatory either now or after I've explained them slash you've read about them. OK, so let's talk about how to implement the extended Euclidean algorithm now. I think uh, if you just follow the pseudocode on Wikipedia, that's probably the easiest way to make it work. So let me zoom this in. So here is what you want to do. Uh, it's essentially this output. There's your T, there's your S. You want to just repeatedly do this, OK? That will work. So re replace A or set A and B to be old R and R at the same time, set 1 and 0 to be old S and S, whatever these mean. You don't have to fully understand them, just implement this code, OK? And this will eventually solve for the GCD and get those coefficients as well. So those are the coefficients at the very end, and these will be the things that you return as a pair. OK, so hopefully you can read this pseudocode and it makes enough sense. Uh, you can also follow this one. Uh, let's see here. This will also calculate those coefficients there. So either way works, whatever you'd like. But uh, I think this is a good example of you following somebody else's algorithm seeing if you can implement it, OK? And then you know how to, of course, to check your answer, because we went over that in class. OK, so get that working. Uh, it's not a whole lot of code, but just uh, remember that these lines, if you're going to follow this kind of code, remember that these lines mean I am setting these variables at the same time, right? So it's not, this doesn't really translate into two separate lines, OK? It's not first say old r equals r, and then say r equals this, because you might overwrite something. Like you can't do this one first, r equals that part, and then old r equals r, because then you've reset r. It's like this assignment to these two separate variables happens at the same time. So you'll have to take that into account and make sure you're not overwriting values, OK? Because you need like the old, old r when you're setting this r. Does that make sense? That is, uh, that's how you read these. So uh, I can help you understand that further if you'd like. Yell at me on Discord or in Office Hours. but. Uh, that's my, that might be the one thing that trips you up when you uh, Im introduce these uh, algorithms into your code. They're called parallel assignments. You'll have to think about how to do them. Okay, so uh, I think that's about it. So uh, get to work in. There's plenty of uh, algorithms like this one that you can go and implement and see if they work. Uh, and the rest will come after the first lecture next week. Okay, so this will be due. Uh, this will be due week seven after the midterm. So there's plenty of time after I introduce the the final number theory lecture for you to get work it, get all this stuff working. And uh, the only thing that you'll be turning in is your RSA.cpp file. So your implementation here. I have made all the tests that I'm going to test you on myself. Okay, so here they are. Test Palmon, test extended GCD is the one that you'll care about right now. Okay, and then there's a bunch of test RSAs. So Here's a test of the extended GCD. We get back an answer, and we make sure that the first thing of that pair that we get back times the 859 plus the second thing times the 1740, that better be equal to the GCD, which happens to be 1. These are relative prime numbers. OK, so uh, that is, uh, that's that test. And the rest of these will make sense once we learn about RSA and multiplicative inverses and things like that. But feel free to get started. OK. Those are my tests for you. Get them all to pass, and then you can turn in your implementation file. OK, so that is, I think, everything that I wanted to tell you about Lab 2. So good luck. Yell at me if you have any questions, and I will see you next week.